Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 36 of SBR. Today we are going to go through IFRS 13, which is fair value measurement. Now, so here we are going to go through definition. What is the meaning of fair value? How do you value fair value? What are the markers that you use for a fair valuation? And how do you find the fair value for a non-financial asset? These are the four areas that your examiner will test you. And you need to know one thing about IFRS 13, that this standard is not asked as a standalone question, like how revenue, leases, or financial instrument will be asked. Okay, this is asked. You can say that this standard is often combined with some other questions and it might be asked as a part of a question. For example, uh, let's say we'll take financial instruments. We know financial assets, right? They're valued at fair value. So maybe second part could be they might ask how fair value is measured or what are the valuation techniques. So it could be like that. But usually IFRS 13 is not asked. I mean, the marks for this question is very less. It's not very detailed. Okay, because fair value measurement is used in so many standards. If you see your IS 12 income tax, fair value is there. If you take financial instrument, it needs to be valued at fair value. Even uh, we have IS 16, your property planning equipment. We have a revaluation techniques, fair value. Leases, fair value. So there are so many standards which has fair value, right? Where does they measure this fair value? It is from this area. But there, in any question, they usually give you the fair value. That fair value is given to you. But now we are going to go in depth how that fair value that you have got, how it is calculated. How do they measure this fair value? From which, uh, I mean, from what data do they get this fair value? That is what this standard is talking about okay it is a very simple very easy and a short standard okay so let's start with the definition okay in your exam you don't have to write the definition of fair value but knowing it you will understand what fair value is because many of you are not sure what fair value is you just memorize okay this is fair value this needs to be measured at fair value that needs to be measured at fair value what what fair value is actually fair value is a price that you receive when you're selling your asset or the cash that you have to pay to transfer a liability between market participants at the measurement date the date when you're measuring at that date for example i have my iphone with me okay i want to know the price of this iphone now fair value in today's term today's price okay let's say i bought this iphone five years back but knowing the price five five years back is of no use today because why today there are so many things it changed the price might have gone up or down based on inflation and market demand and so many other things technological changes and uh, whatever so i need to know the price in today's term how would i know the price simply i'll just go to the market where they sell iphone if someone wants to buy the iphone okay i will sell my iphone okay i give an offer that i want to sell my iphone okay so when i sell it okay when i'm in the process of selling it i'll be knowing the price they will set a price right they will set, set a price and they will so why because iphone why did i choose a phone because phone is a product where you can get the prices very easily there's a huge market and all the phones are almost identical the prices are almost very similar it's just maybe your uh, brand maybe the prices might be little up and down based on your brand on Let's say if it's the latest phone, it will be more expensive compared to the obsolete ones. But anyways, more or less, the there's a range, okay? That range is similar. So through that, I can get a value, okay? That what the price would be of that phone, iPhone. They will set a price and I will get to know the price. That price is fair value. It's the same thing if I want to settle a liability also, okay? This should happen between market participants, remember, in open market not between you and your siblings or you or relative why because when you're selling it among relatives or your own friend or someone you will not sell at the market price okay you will obviously sell below it or even above it the other person is other person does not know the actual price so we are not talking about that we are talking about open market normally in the market what will be the price at what price this my phone will be accepted that is known as fair value this is for any good 
okay any good that is the meaning of that is the uh, meaning of a value and it should be at some date measurement date that's why orderly transactions and orderly transaction it's not some transaction which is uh, hidden or something okay it is a very transparent between market participants and at the measurement date okay it's fair value so that price is known as fair value now you need to know the scope of ifrs 13 ifrs 13 does not apply to two standard one is ifrs 2 the other one is ifrs 16 ifrs 2 is i have already finished okay and ifrs 16 i have to cover it okay after this we have ifrs 15 and then ifrs 16 now ifrs 13 there are various approaches of determining fair value both for an asset and a liability okay this works for both number one three approaches are there okay in your exam you might be asked any one approach based on the information given to you one is known as market approach you look at the market you look at the reason sales price that is your fair value second could be cost approach you look at the replacement cost and the third is income based that means this is based on financial projections you do your own financial projections and see so this three approach to find fair value next the price so fair value the nature of fair value is that this is a market based measurement it is not entity so from entity to entity price will not change it's not entity specific the price is based on market so it's a market based measurement okay so when you're determining a price at which an asset would be sold or paid to transfer a liability you must see the observable data from the active market you see the data from the active market right now what is an active market active market means you don't have to know all this definition in your exam please understand this i'm just explaining you so that you know all these terms what is an active market because you need to rely on active market to find fair value what is an active market it's a it's a market where transactions of asset or liability occur very frequently okay ifrs 13 now this is very important this is an area which is usually rested compared to the rest of the lecture that is the three levels of valuation so ifrs 13 classifies inputs into valuation techniques into three levels so you can find the fair value using three separate level starting with level one level one means you just see the quoted prices for identical assets in the active market that means assets are very identical this is like my phone example which i've given you iphone everything is same same model same color just go and check the prices are quoted already so there is no harm it's very easy to get prices for this level then if you're not getting a price for your assets i mean some assets might not be very identical let's say your brand or let's say some intangible assets that is not very identical okay for that we have level two level two inputs are observable prices that are not level one inputs this there there are there is a difference between this two level one there is no change exactly the same price you copy it but level two some adjustments needs to be made okay there are observable prices you just observe you just cannot take exactly the same price why reason so level two includes this quoted prices for similar assets in active market similar because if it's similar there will be some differences you see some differences will be there in that asset still quoted prices you might get second you might get a quoted prices for identical assets but in less active market and third observable inputs that are not prices like interest rate so this three are level two next and the last level three these are unobservable you cannot observe them looking at the market this includes your own projections of cash or profit you do some focused and find basically entities using their own data to predict a fair value this is very risky level three is very risky okay and preference is always given to level one inputs wherever you can make use of the level one information is given to you okay you cannot use level two or level three but if level one information is not given then you go to level two if level two is also not possible then the last resort is level three okay you have to follow the order even in your exam you have to see through which you can find your fair value is it level one level two or level three level three is the last resort 
if you are not able to get from level 1 or level 2. How do you know that? In your exam, you will be given the information based on the information. I cannot tell you now that is always level 1. Sometimes you might have to go for level 2, sometimes level 3. It is based on the information that is given to you in the exam that you can decide. Sometimes they might give you the quoted prices, sometimes they might not give you the quoted prices. They might just give you some cash flow projections. Then understand it's a level 3 input. Okay. Now, so this is a very good example. Okay. Example of an asset at three levels. Okay. They have given you the exam. So level 1. Example is equity shares in a listed entity. Why? Very easy to get the price. Prices are quoted. Unadjusted quoted prices in an active market. You see, you don't have to adjust the quote price because it's very easily available. There's a huge market for it. Level two, if you want to get the, if you want to find the price of a building, okay. So this price might be based on the square meter that you have. But remember, every building is different. It has its own nature so you cannot get exactly the same price for your building based on some other building but you can observe the price okay how maybe similar building in similar location but some adjustments needs to be made level 3 cash generating unit we studied this cash generating unit somewhere please try to record where did we study IS 36 exactly it's IS 36 impairment when we did impairment we went through cash generating unit if in case you forgot I'm just trying to make you remind go back IS 36 and go through cash generating unit okay so example here you have to use your own cash or profit focused using your own data you cannot find a similar price for cash generating unit because you will not get a similar one you will not get the same you will not even get a similar okay so now let's do question before we move on to the markets that we use to find the fair value. Test your understanding three, Baklava. So here you are supposed to discuss whether the valuation techniques suggested by the directors complies with IFRS. Okay, that means the level three, level one, level two and level three. They are talking about this. So Baklava has an investment property that is measured at fair value. This property is rendered out on a short term leases. The directors wish to fair value by estimating the present value of the net cash flow. Tell me which valuation uh, level is this where you are finding the estimating the present value of net cash flow to find the fair value level three. So they have used level three inputs to find the fair value for a investment property, right? They argue that this best reflects the way in which building will be generate economic benefit for Baklava. According to them, this is best. But the building is unique. Okay. This is the feature of the building. Although they there, there have been many sales of similar buildings in local area. So now tell me, based on your understanding of the three levels. See, IFRS told, IFRS 13 very clearly says if you have the information for level 1 or level 2, use them over level 3. But here he has used level 3. But they have also told you they have sales of similar buildings in local area. So this implies that you can use level 2 because information is given there. Okay. Because IFRS 13 gives lowest priority to level 3. If level 1 and 2 are there, are not there then you can use level 3 but since information is given for level 2 then you have to use level 2 so that means it does not comply with IFRS 13 because they are using level 3 okay so rather what should they do they have to adjust the fair value because this is level 2 they have to adjust the fair value of the building okay maybe based on the location and based on the condition of the Baklava's building they can make the adjustment to the building and find the fair value which is level 2 okay so now let us go to the types of market that we use to find fair value so coming to the markets okay there is two types of market one is known as principal market okay principal market we use to measure we use it as a reference point for measuring fair value okay what is principal market Principal market is the market with the greatest activity for the asset or the liability. Principal, okay. Now, so entity should have access to that principal market also at the measurement date. That's why you see for the same asset, different entities will have different principal market. Okay. Now, 
next type of market is known as most advantageous market okay now if there is no principal market okay you only rely to most advantageous market when no principal market is there so first preference is always principal market you have to see whether you can use the principal market or not if there is if no principal market is there let's go to the advantageous market okay then we use this type of market okay advantageous market means this is the market which maximizes your net amount that you receive from selling that means you have to receive the highest amount by selling into that market or minimizes the amount paid to transfer a transfer a liability okay now transaction cost you need to be very careful about the transaction cost here for most advantageous market why because this is the deciding factor this this is the deciding factor to decide which is the most advantageous market that is your transaction cost like your broker fee or legal fee okay but remember you do not adjust your fair value with the transaction cost transaction cost does not have any impact in your fair value transaction cost in fact is taken into account only to decide most advantageous market okay not to adjust your fair value now let's do a question on these two markets before we move on to the non financial asset how do you have, how do we find the fair value for a non financial asset test your understanding four okay please understand when a question is asked on principal and most advantageous market this is how it is asked it is asked in terms of number you have to decide okay so part a is asking what is the fair value if market one is the principal market and b no principal market can be determined so imagine if a so fair value would be the price 26 this is for a if okay minus transport cost that is 2 so it's 24 this is the fair value do you understand i'm sure you didn't understand most of you will be looking here and say that this is the fair value no it's not see when you're taking fair value what did i say in the previous slide you take the price and you deduct your transport cost any cost that is your fair value you do not take the transaction cost why transaction costs are only taken into account to find the most advantageous market it is not adjusted in the fair value you do not deduct it from the price to find the fair value because it is not a characteristics of an asset it is a characteristics to find the market so you do not take transaction cost when finding fair value coming to b so fair value is 24 coming to b if no principal market then you have to see the most advantageous market how based on your net price received which is the highest it is this one market 2 market 2 is your at most advantageous market m a m most advantageous market i'm using short form but you don't use the short form please okay because 22 is greater than 21 here you see they have deducted the transaction and the transport yes to decide most advantageous market both transport costs are also deducted transport cost is deducted sorry transaction cost is yes it is taken because with that only you can find the net price received and based on this net price received only you will decide once it is decided fair value is not 22 this is only to find the market now we find the fair value how like how we have done for a price is 25 minus transport cost not the transaction cost transport cost is 2 which is 23 so this is the fair value according to b okay so that's it non-financial assets okay if an asset is non-financial like property planning equipment or intangible assets this is how you find the fair value ifrs 13 says you have to base it on its highest and the best use that means highest and the best use of property planning equipment what is this highest and the best use this is only for non-financial asset okay not any asset highest and the best use means is the use that market participant would adopt in order to maximize its value for example land sometimes you see land could be used for commercial or residential purpose both and you want to you are currently using it as a commercial you want to know if you turn it into a residential use what is the value of the land one example so there you are going to use this technique 
known as highest and the best use okay wherever the maximum value that is the fair value so the current use normally whatever currently you are using the current use of that non-financial asset is assumed to be the highest and the best use unless you are given some evidence that it says no okay now highest and the best use takes into account three things it needs to be physically possible i mean if you want to change it into a use if you want to change the commercial property into a residential property it should be it should be possible physically okay if chances are there second legally permissible you have to get the permission from law the from the government third financially feasible it should be the best in your best interest it should not give you into losses and something so physically possible legally permissible financially feasible okay pp lp ff you can memorize it like this you need to know these three things now ifrs 13 says a use can be legally permissible even if it's not legally approved that means yes permissibility is there legally but government might not have approved it okay it could be so now let's do a question on non-financial asset before we summarize the ifrs 13 because we are done with ifrs 13 test your understanding five five quarters so here this is an example about a land okay you have to determine how to find the value of a land so before you start this okay how do you start this question you have to first understand land is a non-financial asset you have to write it this is how you start a question without first finding the price or fair value you need to write all this land is a non-financial asset what type of an asset a land is it's a non-financial asset mostly a land is already given most of the time it's a building or a, a land okay for non-financial asset so what does ifrs 13 says you have to talk about the rule of the standard rule of ifrs 13 regarding land what is it ifrs 13 says the fair value of non-financial asset is based on highest and best use you have to mention this in your answers okay I'm just giving you a guideline. You have to write it in proper sentence in different paragraphs. Okay. And it is assumed with assumption that current use, that means whatever the current use of that asset is the current use is the highest and the best use. H B you highest and best use i'm using the short one unless the evidence is the other ways okay you have to write all those points then based on the current use okay you see so they have they own a land and they have used it for industrial use they have given it the price 5 million fair value of this land if used for manufacturing is 5 million okay now they, they many nearby plots of land have been developed for residential use also okay but currently they have they have not they don't they didn't get the planning permission for residential use although permission has been granted for similar plots of land currently they don't have the permission okay if it's for residential the fair value is 6 million with some cost of 0 0.3 okay if they get the condition i mean to get the land into the condition so current use says i mean based on the industrial use fair value is 5 million okay but let's see how if it's for residential what is the fair value we still cannot say this is the highest and the best use we have to find the fair value okay remember residential use is not legally prohibited okay Permission has not been given yet, but it's not legally prohibited. Okay. Not residential use is not legally. If it was legally prohibited, then you cannot build it into residential. Then this would be your fair value only. But since not it's not legally prohibited, okay, it is likely that you will get the permission in the near future. Why? Because similar plot of land has been given the permission. Right? So based on that, if you want to find the fair value. For residential, it would be 6 million minus 0 0.3 the cost. 
which is 5.7 million. Now compare the two, 5 and 5.7. 5.7 is the higher one, no? So the highest and the best use is if it's for residential. The land is used for residential purpose. So the farewell is 5.7. This is how you conclude. Okay. Now let us do the last question, which is test understanding 6. That is based on conceptual framework. Test understanding 6. Okay. C. IFRS 13 could also be asked along with your conceptual framework. Okay. Usually in your question number 4, if I'm not mistaken, in your SBR. Okay. Which is worth uh, 25 marks. So the question is discuss how the application of IFRS 13 enhances the usefulness of financial information. Your answer should refer to the qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. Remember, whenever a requirement says specifically your answer should include this thing, that means your answer should refer it. If you're not referring it and answering everything else, you're not going to get the marks. So you need to know the qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. I suppose you know the four qualitative. There are four qualitative characteristics. I hope you know all the four. Okay. So the conceptual framework says that purpose of financial reporting is to provide useful financial information. Let's see how if you giving fair value. Okay. How it's going to enhance the usefulness of the information. What are the four qualitative characteristics? First, please understand this before you answer. Understandability. One is understandability. Other one is consistency. Then compare, you should be able to understand the information, a user. Information needs to be consistent for it to be useful. Then you have to be able to compare the information from different entity for it to be useful. And number four is verifiable. You should be able to verify the information. This four. So when you are answering this question, you okay. If you are very intelligent, you should know that you can give this information in four different paragraphs with explaining these four points. Okay, and obviously with some introduction. So it makes five paragraphs, let's say around four to five paragraphs. So now you got the structure of the answer. That is what I wanted to show you. Now what I've done is I have copy pasted the answer to show you how the answer looks like. But you can exactly change your words in your own words you can write okay this is the answer if you see the length of the answer do not panic because we are not given the number of marks do not look at the number of lines number of words number of pages it does not matter look at the points that they have mentioned in the answer and how the structure that's it so here if you see that's it this is the answer whole answer how did they give this they started with some introduction regarding what makes an info uh, financial information useful then they have talked about you see verifiability one point this is a qualitative characteristics number two they talked about comparability this is number two number three consistency and number four understandability you see so first few lines is introduction introduction on what whenever a question like this is asked on conceptual framework and useful information okay immediately start by referring two things one is faithful representation other one is relevant always start your answer like this that means to be useful all financial information have to pass two tests relevancy and faithful representation so you have to this is the way you start this type of question always okay what is the nature of faithful representation again it has three things faithful representation is again break and it is divided into three things how it needs to be complete information needs to be complete that means it should include all the parts it should be neutral it should not show two positive or two negative neutral and it should be free from error these three things are the characteristics of faithful representation so first relevancy and faithful representation then that faithful representation is further broken down into complete neutral and free from error okay next we'll talk about ifrs 13 in the next paragraph what does it say so we say that measuring something at fair value 
does it give a you have to link this with this now does it give a faithful representation does it give a relevancy is it free from error is it neutral is it complete all this thing you have to answer now so everything is based on your first paragraph how you have set the tone from there you have to pick this is for any question but the nature of this type of question is very standard and very similar so you can always uh, you know maybe your standards might change here it is ifrs 13 maybe you might be given let's say ifrs 9 some other standard but faithful representation relevancy are same always this is the fundamental characteristics that makes an information useful later we'll talk about qualifying the quali the qualitative characteristics that is the four qualitative characteristics that comes later in the answer verifiability comparability understandability consistency okay so now since you have understood the structure of the question this okay answer now it's very easy for you to pick okay so i can go a little faster i hope so measuring items at fair value is often argued to provide relevant information i will highlight it for you maybe it's easier that way yes so IFRS 13, yes. When you're measuring something at fair value, obviously you will give preference to fair value over historical cost because that's more relevant. You understanding? But there is a problem. See, you have to give pros and cons. On one side, you are saying it's useful information, but second hand, it says it does not specify when assets and liability should be measured at fair value. They said, okay, measure at fair value, but when? The date is not given. But this is governed by other IFRS or IAE standards. Other IFRS standards will say. Okay. IFRS 13 does not say that. Next. Okay. You can talk about the three levels. Level 1, 2 and 3. In your answer, you can bring this further. So when you're measuring fair value, IFRS 13 gives importance to the three levels, right? Obviously, level 1. And you can give a brief description for level one that is quarter prices for identical assets in active market. Okay, so what happens when you're using level one? Now, see, we have talked about we have they have passed the relevant. You have explained IFRS 13 is relevant. What, what about faithful representation? FR is it neutral? Is it free from error? Is it complete? That's what that's why you are um, mentioning level one, two, and three. To find the faithful representation test okay so because they are quoted this requires no judgment and the result is neutral you don't need any judgment so that's why the result is neutral so you see it's faithfully represented also the two tests it has passed now you have passed relevancy and faithful representation now we'll talk about the four characteristics okay quali quali qualitative St starting with verifiability okay how it is verifiability See, because the prioritization is given for both level and one level two, the resulting valuations are verifiable. You can verify whatever the valuation is. It's easy to verify because you have a market, open market, or similar. So that that has been passed. Okay, passed. Number two, comparability. It's easier to compare. How? See, level three. Normally, most of the management does not use level 3. It is only used if no other inputs are available. Okay. But because IFRS 13 says, you can bring all what you have studied about IFRS 13 into this picture. How? Regarding, uh, what is it? Regarding individual entity. See, IFRS 13, it is measured from the perspective of a market, particip market participant, not your individual entity okay and so that's why it will aid the investors to compare one entity with another because it is based on a market not your own uh, wish okay next so that is about comparability now how consistency is explained see to measure fair value using principal market we use principal market right if not principal then most advantages but we have a guideline we just do not pick any market randomly and measure the fair value. Okay, everyone goes through that, not only you. So principal market and for non-financial, it is the highest and the best use. So because of this, it reduces the scope for management buyers. That means management cannot have any say in this. They have to follow this rule only. They cannot bias the result for their own favor. 
If it's non-financial asset, it is highest and best use for all the firms. If it is to measure fair value, preference has to be given to the principal market for all the firms. So that's in that way, it reduces the scoop for management to give uh, bias the result. That's why it is consistent. So entities are determining fair value consistently. Consistently, you are determining the fair value. So consistency is also there. Three tests it has already passed. The fourth one is understandability. How is it understandable? You have to disclose. Even if level three are using, you have to disclose the estimation methods. Especially when level three input is used because here you have to estimate a lot. So you have to disclose that estimation methods also. On what basis you have estimated? What is the estimation methods based on which you have derived the fair value? You just cannot give the fair value and say it is a level three. You have to give the reasons and how those estimation figures and everything. Okay, so based on this, any user will be able to understand. So it is understandable. Okay. Now, the summary of fair value. So we started with the measurement approach, the three approach, market-based, cost-based, income base market is based on sales price cost is based on residual replacement cost and income is based on your own projections then we went through the three level level one quoted price for similar for identical products like your share price okay level two observable price let's say price of a building like price of a similar building level three is your own data like if you want to find the price of your own brand that you have created market the two markets are principal and most advantageous market principal market where highest level of goods and uh, assets and liabilities are traded most advantageous is based on the transaction cost you will decide whichever is giving you the highest receipt okay coming to the last non-financial asset highest and the best use and these are the three it is to be physically possible legally permissible and financially feasible so that's it for IFRS 13. I'll see you in the next lecture. The upcoming lecture is IFRS 15, that is revenue from contracts from customer. Another very important, important lecture. So all these are very important lecture in fact. But yeah. So there are lots of questions on IFRS 13. Please go to your revision kit now after seeing this video and pick up those questions individually one by one in a go in one setting and try to do and see if you can see any pattern in it or not and what type of points are usually asked is it based on three techniques three valuation levels or is it based on the markets the two markets or is it non-financial asset you have to see this type which is most frequently asked you will get a pattern okay or whether it is usually asked also or not so that's it and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe so that you get the notification of my latest video. Thank you and take care.